the church say amen. amen. Good morning and happy Easter all. This is our Easter Sunday celebration here at Brook Hill. My name is Reverend Kathy Altman. I'm the associate pastor here. Uh, I, on behalf of myself, the Reverend Dr. Dana Wirtz, the orchestra and the choir and all of us here, we welcome you to worship this morning and I will give you a warning. I'm a pastor on Easter Sunday and I've had caffeine. So just, just, just there it is, all right, there it is, all right. And so as I welcome you today, just a couple of quick connection points. Next Sunday is what is known as Holy Humor Sunday or Bright Sunday. So I am going to encourage you to wear your bright colors and join us for worship as we tell a few jokes and as we truly celebrate the greatest surprise of all time. Our, uh, our um, spotlight this week is Ellen Shippert, and I wanted to issue a special thank you to her. She was instrumental in helping to set up the prayer stations, and so we are just so grateful for her artistic talent and um, all that she is a blessing to each of us, and so check that out if you are inclined. And so, as we gather together for worship, I pray that you will open your hearts to the joy and the, and the wonder all this day has to bring. Amen. Would you please stand and join with me as you are able uh, in hymn number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today, verses 1 through 4. begin our service today, hear these words. During the season of Lent and this last week in Holy Week, we focused on growing gardens, 
attending the life that is right in front of us rather than constantly climbing ladders of what this world defines as success. We have been embracing good enough lives and good enough selves that are worthy of love no matter what. We have been acknowledging the suffering that is a natural part of life. And we have practiced compassion as we deal with the realities and limitations that invite us to let go of the perfectionism and the incessant drive toward the limit and the limitations that um, something other than our own real. I'm sorry. Oh, try that again. Yeah. We have been acknowledging the suffering that is a natural part of life. And we have practiced compassion as we deal with the realities and limitations that invite us to let go of perfectionism and the incessant drive towards something other than our own real, holy, and blessed regardless lives. And now we encounter Easter. It is a day that we proclaim that while death is a part of life, even little deaths along the ways of, of dreams, of love, of the way we thought life would go, even though this is a part of life, we are a part of a faith that invites us to consider that the good gardener is always tending us, abiding with us beyond any kind of death that we face. And so with that said, would you please join us in our uh, theme song for this series? The little green sheet that's in your hymn is there. <coughs> Let us pray. Holy One, you whose love endures forever, you keep offering us new life and hope no matter what. We praise you, for you are our strength and our salvation. We shall not die but live, for you call us into the light, encouraging us to reach for the sun, unfurl our full colors, and know that we are held in the deep and rich soil of your garden. This is more than good enough for us. Amen. I invite our children to come forward at this time to spend a little time with Pastor Dana. Okay. You can come out up around here. Hello, DJ. Good to see you all. Well, happy Easter, everyone. It's good to see you all. I want to share something with you that I just love that my husband gave me. He actually gave it for my anniversary, but it reminds me of Easter. And so um, I just think it's great. It, look at this. What is on this card? Butterflies. butterflies. He knows that I love butterflies. I love the color. I love the signs of spring. And, you know, butterflies are something that um, are considered a symbol of Easter. Why do you think that happens? Think about, what, what do they start off with as? Caterpillars. They're caterpillars, that's right. Okay, and Jesus came down to earth and caterpillars go around and eat and live life, right, together. Here's a little leaf. Okay, and Jesus came to earth and lived among us and taught us. 
And thousands and thousands of leaves. I don't know if Jesus did that, but you're right. Butterflies do. <laughs> or caterpillars do. Yes. Okay. And so then... It, okay. Well, you know what, Liam? Hang on. <laughs> so, he's excited. Okay. So, they, they crawl, they eat, they eat, they get bigger, and then raise your hand. What would you think would happen next? DJ. They, 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 make, a they make a cocoon. They, they crawl in, and they actually, it says the insides of them come apart. They actually kind of die. They're not a caterpillar anymore. Did you know that? And then something amazing happens. That they are changed or transformed. What it happens? I'm going to ask somebody else. Who, what happens to them? What happens to them? They turn into butterflies, that's right. And so here's my little butterfly, okay? Well, Jesus lived on our earth, and he told us about God, and then, sadly, he died on the cross for our sins, and it, it was sad, and, and when he died, they buried him in a cave-like tomb, which is kind of like a cocoon, because in that, something happened. He was dead, but then what happened, DJ? He rose from the dead. When his friends came to the tomb, his body wasn't there. And then he went to the garden, and, and Mary was there, his friend, and she looks around, and oh, guess what? There's Jesus, right? He's calling her name. So he came back to life, and now he was still Jesus, but he had a resurrected body. So he, you know, she didn't even recognize him. That was what was amazing, right? So DJ, what are you going to tell me about There is. Birth, Birth. Caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly, and, and it dies in the sixth one. It comes back from the dead to see its family. Oh, it does? Okay. I don't remember that one, but okay. <laughs> well, there is, a, there is a word that we use on Easter, especially on Easter, and we sang it today in a song. It was called Alleluia. Can you say that? Hallelujah. Can you say that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it means praise the Lord. And so I thought today that we would do a big hallelujah cheer. We're going to take our hallelujah butterflies and we're going to make them fly. Just like Jesus, after he came back to life, he descended, he ascended into heaven. It's See, a good thing we have less kids because last time. <laughs> That's right. We had a lot of kids last time. Okay, come on down. You're going to help me do this. Okay, so grab, you can help me grab a part of this, spread it out. Everybody go. Some people over here. Come on around. Come on over here. And somebody will hold that. Okay, hold it, hold it out, because I'm going to put some hallelujah butterflies in the middle. Hang on. Yeah, don't throw it yet. Okay, hang on. And on the count of three, we're all going to yell hallelujah to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! 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 Yay! Okay. Thank you. Can you help me collect? Help me. Keep. You can keep one if you want. If not, just, just come pick it up. See if you can pick them up the fastest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wow, that was fast. What do you say? Okay, put them in here. And you, if you'd like to keep one, you can. If you'd like to keep one. Okay, to remember this day, you can keep one if you want. Okay, wait just a minute. We're going to say a prayer, and then you can go. We're almost done. You want to keep that one? Okay, that's fine. Everybody get one? Okay, so let's pray. Say, Dear God, thank you that you are alive and that you love us. Help us to, to go into the world like butterflies <laughs> and share the good news of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Go ahead.
you all had my perspective for that. Oh, it's got the brass on one side, the choir on the other. It's perfect. This is awesome. <laughs> so as we enter into our time of reflection, hear these words. Easter is tricky when it comes to faith. We come for the happy ending, and, the, and they lived happily ever after. The resurrection story proclaims hope over despair and life over death. Yet we know that life continued and continues for us as a story of spiking heartbreak moments that are not forever fixed. The nature of being created for love is that we will always hunger for more, that there is never enough life and love to satisfy, and endings are often too soon. But perhaps a good enough faith is one that moves through the chronic nature of being incurably human with an eye for resurrection moments that assure us that this good enough life is worthy of our amazement. I invite you to imagine in this silence the deep seed and shoot that is growing within you, yearning for light and life. Let us take a moment of silent reflection. Hear this compassionate word from the prophet Isaiah. I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the fear of isolation and anguish at endings, inviting us to community and creativity for birthing new life, unexpected life, unending love. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven even now. Glory to God. Amen. So as we come to our time of prayer, I wanted to invite any who would like to come to the altar um, and kneel up for, if you would care to do that at this time. Uh, we do have um, at least one concern that we want to raise, and I know there are many others, and I'll give you an opportunity to say those as well. Um, we, uh, Brady is a nephew of Wayne Gooding. Wayne is currently in Florida uh, with a family as Brady is a 28-year-old fighting for his life. And so we will pray for, um, please pray for Wayne and his family at this critical time. And also, on a positive note, <laughs> I can see you all and I'm so grateful. It, it is just so grateful. Um, <laughs> For those of you who don't know, my Holy Week included surgery, um, and so I'm just very much grateful that I can see. You all are wearing some really nice bright colors, and I can see them, so that's awesome. So uh, thanks be to God. Um, and so I, I know that there are many other concerns and joys, uh, and so let us go to God in prayer at this time. Gracious and holy God, we do thank you for all this day means for us. We thank you for your son Jesus and the, the sacrifice he made for us, willingly walking the road to Calvary in our place. Lord, we thank you that uh, his life did not end at the cross. He was, did not stay buried in the tomb, but he is risen, and we celebrate the risen Christ today. We thank you that you continue to bless us and strengthen us each and every day of our lives as we walk this journey, knowing that we do not walk it alone. Lord, we pray for all those in need of your healing touch and especially for young Brady as he's fighting for his life. Lord, we pray for this family. We pray that you will continue to uh, provide that healing touch and the comfort and care that is needed. Lord, we pray for all those who grieve this day. We pray especially for those who are affected by the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Lord, we, these tragedies happen and we don't have explanations, but Lord, we know that you are with us even in the darkest times of our lives. And so bless those families and comfort them at this time. Lord, we pray for all those who feel lost on this day, for those who have no sense of what next steps will be. Lord, we pray that you continue to assure us that you are walking each and every step with us. And even though we can't see the whole journey, we, we are showing us the very next step and guiding us every step of the way. Bless us together as we lift up all those concerns that we have in our hearts. Lord, we know there are so many. And so we name them before you now, uh, either out loud or silently in our hearts.
Holy God, we thank you that you hear and receive our prayers. We thank you that you continue to strengthen us each and every day of our lives. Bless us together as this body of Christ. Help us to share this good news in every way that we can. Help us to truly shine your light in such a way that others are going to be curious. What is it that they have? What is it that they know about? And how can I get that? Lord, bless us together. Thank you for your son who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able and join in hymn number 310, He Lives. Pastor like Dana likes to say, we are, you know, I can't talk right now. I need more coffee. That's all there is to it. It's just not happening here. All right. <laughs> we get to partner with God. This is our opportunity to invest in the kingdom of God. We have many ministries here at Brook Hill that we are supporting through our giving. And so I just thank you so much for generously supporting those ministries as we continue to share the light of Christ in every way. Amen. 
See, I got an amen even for an offering invitation. This is great. There we go. All right. We'll be passing the plate here in the sanctuary, but online giving is always an option, and we thank you for your generosity.
we are so thankful to you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day, for the gifts that you give us so generously. We ask that you use these gifts for the furtherment of your kingdom here on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen laying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still laying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. You see, they did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. And then Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not re realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. This time we will have an uh, antiphonal reading entitled, The King of the Jews. Ella is going to tell the Christmas story with the love and joy it brings. Randy is going to tell the Easter story with the fear and eventual celebration. Listen to how these two stories are intertwined, how they are the bookends of Jesus' human life here on earth. Listen to the stories of the people surrounding Mary and Joseph as they welcome a newborn into their lives and into this world, and how people eventually reject Jesus at the end of his human life. Listen to the role the angels play when the multitudes welcome the miracle baby in a stable, and how two angels Welcome the woman at the tomb, quietly announcing his resurrection. What resonates in your heart? Something to ponder, as Mary did. And even though this reading represents the beginning story of Christmas people and the end story of Easter people, yet we know there is far more to his story before Jesus was ever born here on, on earth and far more of his story after he died, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. Jesus, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Alpha, and the Omega.
He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And Joseph also went up from Galilee. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man was Galilean. And then as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod. Out of the city of Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Into Judea, unto the city of David, which was called Bethlehem. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? And all of his followers stood afar, beholding these things. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles. For unto you is born this day. And he shall be mocked. In the city of David. And spitefully entreated. A savior. And spit on. Which is Christ the Lord. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And having said this, he gave up his spirit. And she brought forth her firstborn son. And when Joseph had taken the body. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. And laid him in a manger. And laid it in his own new tomb. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Where no man before was laid. And when they were to come into the house. Upon the first day of the week. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother. They came to the tomb. And they presented unto him gifts. Bringing spices which they had prepared. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. But the stone was rolled away. Behold, two men stood by them in white garments. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. And they said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Glory to God in the highest. He is not here. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. He is risen. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Amen. So this, this week, near the end of the week, we had um, some wonderful prayer stations that are still up. In fact, you can go see them afterwards if you'd like. And in one station was a garden. And people would plant real seeds into the dirty soil, and they were watered with water, and they were also watered with our prayers for God to grow something new and thriving in our lives. People wrote their prayers on little cards like this and stuck them in the dirt with the seeds and wrote things like peace, contentment, joy, and hope. And here and now we wait for those seeds to sprout. We wait and hope that the flowers will bloom and that with trust, God will, as our gardener, bring thriving life to us all, bring life out of dead-looking seeds, but also out of messy, sinful people. That's the gospel story. Our Easter story today takes place in a garden where the body of Jesus has been buried in a cave-like tomb, like a seed planted in the ground. And Mary has come to tend the body with spices as it was their tradition. And when she arrived at the tomb, she discovered the body was gone. Mary left weeping, sitting in the garden, until she encounters who she thinks is the gardener, until Jesus called her name, and she believed. Yes, God can bring life out of death, and there is hope for our messy, sin-infested garden world. Alleluia. 
Uh, let us pray. God, our Master Gardener, come today as we rejoice in the resurrected life of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Plant in our listening hearts seeds of faith that under your tender care will grow us into faithful disciples. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You just heard the wonderful creative reading that wove Christmas into the Easter story uh, together about the life of Jesus Christ, who from the manger all the way to the cross, that is God's part of God's great love story to restore our broken relationship, a story that began long before that time when Jesus was born and was finished in a garden. It started in a garden and finished in a garden. In the book of Genesis, we learn that God is the master gardener who planted a garden called Eden. God created all the elements needed for life to grow. There was light in the sun. There was rain from the clouds. There was dirt for uh, seeds to grow. And God planted that garden, and he placed in it animals of all kinds, all kinds of colors and shapes. And then he made a man and a woman. He made them from the earth, and he breathed life into them, and they were in the garden together. And so as God was in relationship with, with human beings then, and life was good and thriving and beautiful, until it wasn't, till that moment when the couple decided they wanted to do things their way, not God's way. And their disobedience led them to be banished from the garden. But God did not give up on our world. In fact, it says God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus into the world to save us. In life of Jesus, we read about another garden after Jesus' his final meal with his disciples, they ended up in the garden with Jesus praying, a garden at the foot of the Mount of Olives. Here Jesus prayed, Not my will, but your will be done. And it is in this garden that Jesus is arrested. And later he's sentenced to be crucified, experiencing the terrible death on the cross. And I heard this story all my life, and honestly, until I prepared this sermon today, I didn't really think about these words, but now I do as we talk about gardens. In verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 41, there was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified. Isn't that kind of strange? Here in a place of death and suffering and torture, there were plants and flowers and life. Death and life. It's interesting, and John goes on to say, and in that garden, there was a new tomb. Again, the first garden brought sin into the world, and now in this garden, Jesus offered his life to save us from the sin, and he was buried in a garden tomb. In our scripture reading in the Gospel of John today, we learn it was the first morning of the first day of the week, and Mary comes to the garden while it is still dark. And this is the Mary that Jesus healed from seven demons. This is also the Mary who, along with other ladies, helped to support the work of Jesus and the disciples. We also know that Mary was present at the foot of the cross with his mother and other women. And so she saw him die. And so that is the Mary now that is now there at the tomb, weeping, weeping. Jesus is gone. And she looks into the tomb and she sees two angels who ask her, why is she crying? And, and you know, she, she's, she's confused, and she turns around, and she sees this other person who also asks her why she's crying, and who is she looking for? She isn't thinking about resurrection. She's worrying about who stole Jesus' body. She's so caught up in her grief that she thinks that Jesus is the gardener. Now, this is really interesting, as you would think that Mary really knew Jesus. She would recognize him, right? And we might have in our mind that Jesus resurrected. He's all glowing and white and magnificent. But that's not what she saw. She thought he was a gardener. He must have looked kind of ordinary, as Mary does not mistake him for an angel or a ghost. 
She thinks he's a gardener. I wonder what made her think that. I mean, if I saw a gardener like this, would I recognize who that is? Maybe. Maybe, Randy. I don't know. Right? I mean, we have it in our head what gardeners look like, right? Gardeners get dirty. They have gloves on because they dig in the dirt. Okay, they might a little, look a little exhausted because they're busy pulling weeds and doing work. And when Mary saw Jesus, there's something about him that made her think he was into gardening. It isn't that unusual to think of Jesus as a gardener. Think about it. He loved to talk about seeds and planting them and, and rocky soil and pathways and good soil. Remember that parable? And then he used garden language to tell us about God's love. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. So there's a lot of stories like that. In fact, we just had one not that long ago, a few weeks ago, where we talked, Jesus talked about the unproductive fig tree. Remember, the owner wanted to cut it down. It wasn't any good. But, but the gardener is the one that said, no, let's wait a year. Let's tend it and fertilize it and care for it. And then see if it produces fruit. See, that's the heart of a gardener, right? Uh, some of you are master gardeners here. You know this better than me. But you go to all that work, planting seeds, fertilizing, doing all the work, and you have hope that they will grow. You can't make them grow. You can just set up the circumstances and the elements so that, that it's a good growing environment. But then you wait with faith to see if they'll grow. Jesus had that kind of gardening heart. And I thought about it later. You know, Jesus just comes out of the grave and it's dark and he probably felt comfort being there in the garden. Again, knowing, again, that garden is a theme that runs throughout God's story. And the gardeners know the garden. They know the names of every plant, right? My mother used to tell you every tomato, what kind it was, what kind of pepper. She knew what, what it needed, what it didn't need, when to pull it up, when, it, you know, when it's ready. Jesus knows our name. He knows all about us. And that's how Mary recognizes Jesus. He looks at her and he says, Mary. And she's like, oh, teacher. Isn't that interesting that she says teacher? Because that's who Jesus was to her. He was the one that taught her about God, that how to live her life and what true love really means. And Jesus calls each of us by name, if we will listen. The Lord says in Isaiah 43, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. We are called by name. We are called for a reason. God wants us to be on Jesus' garden team. Okay? Stay with me here. See, God's work had only begun in the resurrection. We still live in a world that's infested with um, the weeds of sin and all kinds of, of evil and things that need help, need transformation, people that are lost. And so we need to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why on the night when Jesus, the risen Christ, finally appeared to his disciples, he breathed on them. And he said, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus also said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. We're messy, we're imperfect, we mess up, but our lives, the grace of God, can be a witness to the power of God to transform and heal. If we abide or stay connected to the vine Jesus, we are promised we will bear much spiritual fruit. And that is good enough for me. It says in Romans 8:11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, ready, lives in you. Look around at each other. The Spirit of, that raised Christ is in you. We are all like kind of like superheroes with the power of the Holy Spirit. And God can use that spirit and, and, and imperfect people. God can use our testimony, use our serving and planting and all the things we do. God can use that. When we have the Holy Spirit filled, do we look holy? Do we look religious? Do we look perfect? 
No, <laughs> we're a mess, right? But that's good because what people see in us is not us. They see Jesus at work, planting, pruning sometimes, growing things, um, helping our world to be transformed. Just imagine all of us together as God's garden, the church with shovels in our hands, loving and serving to cultivate faith, filled with the hope of a restored garden. There's another garden. Do you know about this one? It's in the last part of the Bible. It's in Revelation, and it gives me hope. I want you to listen to this vision of the Apostle John as he shares this hope. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and the lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Isn't that wonderful? Don't we need it? No, there would no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, just imagine, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Amen. Because our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we can look forward to this garden. God is the master gardener, and he has a plan for each of us. It's a good plan, and we can grow strong even in the midst of difficult times. How is your growing season going? Are you finding yourself a little bug-eaten? Maybe a little weed, a lot of weeds taking over? You know, we all are going through rough times. Maybe you're struggling with um, overcommitment with school and work and family issues and all kinds of things. Maybe you're concerned for health issues or your family or all kinds of, of things that we can be caught up in. You know what? This is a good place to come. It's a place of God's love and grace. We are all living proof that God can create beauty out of the lowliest weed. His garden is altogether beautiful. Today, Jesus is calling your name. Maybe today will be the day you will say yes to Jesus as Lord and Savior. Maybe today you'll say yes to being baptized into the new life Jesus offers. Perhaps today you'll say yes to joining Jesus in serving in ministry. We are all invited to come to the garden to be committed followers of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I think it's time, church. Let me up. Here they are. I think we need to get on our garden gear. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can do this quicker. <laughs> we need to get on our garden gear. Oh, wait. Here we go. Got to have this. <laughs> get out your tools. It was represent the word of God and prayer and watering with our faith, right? Fill up your water jugs because we, we are invited to come and serve today as a church of Jesus Christ. Today, today, Jesus is calling you. Let's celebrate our new life. And you know what? One day we're going to have the biggest garden party ever. <laughs> Alleluia. Praise God. Amen. Lord, you meet each of us in the garden of our lives and you call our names. We give thanks that we serve a risen Lord who calls each of us by name. We are called to be disciples who make disciples who live and love like Jesus, part of God's, Jesus' garden team, labors in the harvest of lives, transformed by your love. Let us be like Mary, all excited to tell the world, I have seen the Lord, oh let it be so. Amen. You join me now in our last song, hymn number 304, Easter People, Raise Your Voice.
So, so everyone, put on your garden gear, get your tools, fill up your watering can, let's go out into the fields of life. We are called to proclaim the good news, love God, love our neighbor as ourselves, and we are to give thanks in all circumstances and plant seeds of faith. Gardening takes patience and hard work, and that's more than good enough, right? Stay connected to the vine Jesus, and you will have a bumper crop of spiritual fruit. And joy, say this with me, Alleluia! Let the butterflies rise up and fill the sky with glory. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Okay, so stay, stay seated or stay, stand up. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
this place with the excitement of a pastor on Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter, all.